What is up YouTube? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you guys something sweet. This is the third installment of the Kubernetes and DevOps secret management series. And in this series, we'll be taking a step-by-step -step approach of managing secrets with Vault on Kubernetes. If you're completely new with Vault on Kubernetes and secret management, I highly recommend you check down part one and part two of the series. Um, we're basically taking a look at how to get Vault up and running, the configuration, and just the basic concepts of Vault. In this video, I'll fast forward through some of the basics. We'll get a Vault up and running, configure with TLS end-to-end -end encryption and then comes the exciting stuff how do we automatically inject secrets from the vault into our application so that being said without further ado let's go okay so what is the purpose of this video what is the outcome what do we want to achieve this is quite simple we have a database now this database can be some external storage it can be running on microsoft azure google cloud aws it can be a database it can be some key value stored could be a redis cluster it doesn't matter it's just we just need um, our we have an application that has a need to connect to storage and it needs a credential so what we're going to do is we have a kubernetes cluster and we have a pod running on the cluster now this doesn't have to be some fancy application it can be an old legacy php um, application that just expecting credentials on this so what do we do now how do we authenticate and trust that this pod can have access to the secret so when we set up a vault we're going to create a policy that binds this application to a bunch of secrets now how do we do that in kubernetes we have this concept of service account so we're going to run this pod as a service account and when we have our vault running we're going to set up a policy so vault will then use the service account to authenticate it's going to also verify um, through the kubernetes api whether this pod is legitimate so we're going to set up a kubernetes auth um, configuration for vault once off and then what it can do is we'll deploy the injector mechanism to inject our secret into the pod. But this pod is completely unaware of Vault's existence. All it expects is a secret file on disk, and then it can go ahead and access the database. So very, very straightforward. Now to get a Kubernetes cluster up and running, I'm gonna use this um, product called Kind. So I'm gonna create a, a cluster with Kubernetes 1.17, and I'm gonna create that inside of of docker so this is a really good product i've put a link down in the description for kubernetes kind take a look at that it's an easy way to get a kubernetes cluster up and running on inside of a docker container so we can see we ask it for node 1.17 it's preparing our node preparing the config do all, all of this stuff and then we have access to it so i can say kubectl get nodes and we have a node should be coming up and ready in a second we say kubectl create namespace and then i'm going to go ahead and apply our vault server implementation and then i'll do kubectl get pods and we can see our pod is up and running and then what i'm going to go ahead and do is unseal the vault initialize and unseal it so what you also may want to do is check the pvc for the storage so in my getting started guide i'm i'm deploying a local persistent volume so we mount all the stuff to local disk and that'll help us persist our vault um, across restarts and we're only running a standalone single instance for this demo and what i'm going to do now is initialize the vault so i'm going to say um exec run an exec command in that pod and i'm going to run vault operator in it that'll go ahead and initialize the vault give us our um, unsealed keys and our root token so i'm just going to go ahead and grab that and i'm going to paste that outside so i don't lose it now in order for us to use the vault we have to unseal it so i'm going to go ahead and unseal and i'm going to use one of the keys i'm going to run the unseal again and then I'm going to run the third time. So now we can see our vault has been unsealed. It's no longer sealed. And now we should be able to go ahead and access our vault. So now we can go ahead and take a look at the injector. So this video is just the basic secret injection, meaning how do we get a secret moved from a vault into an application automatically without the application knowing and without the application being aware of vault. We still require a human to put the secret in the vault. In order to understand dynamic secret injection, we have to go through the basics first. So the assumption is that the secret will be already be in vault and to automatically inject that secret, we're going to be taking a look at the vault injector. Okay, so to get the injector working, we're going to 
gonna need a service account. Previously, we deployed our server, so all the files in here. Now we're gonna take a look at the injector and there's a service account right here. We have a service account that we're gonna be using to run our injector and it has a role binding and a role which allows it to list get watch and patch mutating webhook configurations now you might have noticed i was using kind to bootstrap this kubernetes cluster and the reason for that is kind allows us to um, bootstrap with admission webhooks enabled so if we take a look at kubectl api versions we can see that we have the admission registration v1 and v1 beta this is really important because um, to get this mutating webhook working, you need those two APIs enabled in your cluster. It's enabled in Kubernetes 1.7 by default, but in Docker for Windows, you can't really control which version of Kubernetes you get, and you can also not configure the API to enable these registrations. So if you use something like K3S or Kind, Shipyard, you can run a cluster, a 1.17 cluster in Docker and have it enabled by default. We do get pods, we have our vault up and running. We're gonna go ahead and deploy the injector so we do that and if we do get pods we can see our injector is now coming up so what does the injector do if we take a look at this webhook mutating webhook um, we can see that we have a webhook running every time a pod gets created or updated this mutate um, path API endpoint will get called so every time someone applies a deployment and a pod gets created or updated Kubernetes API will make a call to this webhook that will be able to inject a secret into our pod. Now, our pod needs to have the annotations um, for Vault in order to um, basically opt in to have secrets injected. So all other regular deployments should work um, with no issues. So one of the things to notice, if you try and deploy and your pods are not being created, you can just take a look at under the cube system namespace, take a look at the Kubernetes API logs. It'll show you that it's trying to make a call to the webhook and whether that's successful. And then you can also take a look at the injector, Look, take a look at the pod logs for this guy, and you should see it receiving the request and doing the mutation. So that is a very easy to troubleshoot um, if this is not working. So the next step, in order for Vault to authenticate um, and with the Kubernetes API to make sure it trusts the pod, we need to go in ahead and um, log into Vault and enable the Kubernetes auth configuration. So that is very simple to do. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to exec run a um, remote command into our pod called Vault login. And it's going to ask us for our master root token. Just going to do that. Now we're logged in and ready to go. So what we're going to do is do this injector auth policy. So we log in and then we're going to go ahead and enable Kubernetes auth. I'm just going to go ahead and paste that. That's vault auth enable Kubernetes. And then what we're going to do is um, exec into that pod, get a terminal into the pod, and we're going to create a, con a config. So I'll take a look at this. Um, what we're doing is we say vault write, we create this uh, config file for Kubernetes auth, we grab the token of the service account from the vault, so the vault runs as a service account, so we use that token, we set up and point it to the Kubernetes API, we also grab the CA certificate and we write it to a file. So this will allow Vault to talk to the Kubernetes API to do the authentication. So now we have a Vault up and running with an injector ready to go. Vault is authorized. Um, we basically have everything ready to go. So once off setting to make sure we can inject secrets into our pods securely. And just a reminder, this is the Docker development YouTube series. Everything I've done in this video is under HashiCorp Vault in a readme. So you can follow this all step by step exactly how I did it. And the last part of this of this video is how do we do the injection so we're going to do basic secret injection so you can go ahead and click at this and then follow the readme for basic secret injection so we're going to deploy an application um, that's going to expect some credential on disk so let's take a look at the basic secret injection so in order for this to work we need to go into our vault and create a policy and a role so policies and roles allow us to map secrets to specific pods and service accounts so what we need to do first first of all is we need to go into our vault so i'm going to do this exec command and now that i'm in I, i'm going to create a basic um, role i'm call it basic secret role and i'm going to bind a service account called basic secret to a um, namespace vault example 
and I'm going to bind it to a policy called basic secret policy for one hour. I go ahead and I created that role. So this will basically map our service account to our pod to a policy. So now we can go ahead and create a policy um, to map our service account to a bunch of secrets. So what I'm going to do now is create a policy that tells this role what secrets it can access. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to execute this, which basically creates an app policy file. So we can access any secret um, called basic secret. So in this vault, in this hierarchy, so vault allows us to store secrets in like kind of a folder structure hierarchy. So here I have created one called secret and then I've created like a folder under that called basic secret. So I'm giving it wildcard access to anything under there. So this service account um, running our pod will only be able to see all secrets under the basic secret folder. So I go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and write that policy. Now, in order for this to, to work, we're going to need a secret. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, create, I'm first going to enable the secret path called slash secret. Um, and then I'm going to create a secret. So I'm going to say vault KV put secret, and I'm going to put it in this folder structure. So I create secret slash basic secret slash hello world. I create a username and a password for my database. That's that's fairly straightforward. And that's part of the manual step for the basic secret injection. In the future video, we'll take a look at dynamic secret creation where we can dynamically um, allow Vault to create this for us on the fly. So now we're ready to exit out of that. So if we head over to the Vault UI, we can see we've enabled the authentication method for Kubernetes. And then the interesting part here is we've enabled this um, secret uh, engine called secret and we've created a secret folder under here called basic secret and then there's a secret called hello world with a username and a password and if we head over to policies we've also created a basic secret policy which allows um, whoever we apply this policy on will be able to do read on this folder structure so they'll be able to see everything in this folder okay so now that our secret is in vault um, let's take a look at how do we deploy a application that can use that secret. So if you head over to the example apps folder, this is for the basic secret tutorial. We have a deployment.yaml and have a look at this. This is a basic application. So it's just a normal deployment. Everyone's familiar with that. We're going to run one replica and we're going to run it with a label and nothing fancy, right? The fancy part here is that we're running this service as a service account. So this is the first thing. We use the basic secret as, ba as a service account. That service account is already now mapped to a role, which is mapped to a policy, which is mapped to a bunch of secrets in Vault. So the first uh, critical part is we need the service account in order to work. We're running it over here is where we create the service account. And we're just gonna run this Hello World application. And then the key thing um, where we opt in for secret injection is the annotations. So we tell HashiCorp Vault to inject true. Um, this will inject the secret for us. We also say TLS skip verify because our certificates are self-signed in this demo. For production, you're obviously going to remove that. And then we have the agent inject secret hello world. So this follows kind of a structure. So this hello world is the name of our secret. We tell Vault what secret to inject over here. And you'll need to change this depending on your secret. So we have a secret called Hello World, and this is its location in Vault. And then we also have a template for this um, secret. So you can basically um, run a Go templating engine on top of the secret and transform it to any kind of config that you need. So in our case, our application is expecting a JSON file. So we say with secret, we point to the specific secret and then we kind of this bit here is just json format so you can write like postgres um, sql connection strings um, you can write like microsoft sql connection strings you can write uh, redis connection strings this kind of gives you that flexibility to write your secret in any kind of format that the application is expecting and then the last bit here is we specify a role so this is the role we created um, inside of vault and we mapped it to a policy and we mapped that to a secret so what we can go ahead and do now is we can go ahead and deploy this example um, yaml file so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then what we can do is do a get pods to see if that worked so i'm going to say kubectl um, get pods and we can see our pod is now initializing so what is happening now is a lot of magic is happening behind the scenes so that annotation 
um, gets picked up by our injector webhook. So the Kubernetes API sends a mutating webhook call to our injector. The injector looks at the annotations and kind of decides what to do with that. It'll then go to Kubernetes API, authenticate and make sure that this pod is allowed to get the secret. Um, once that is done, it'll go to the vault get the secret injected into our pod. So we can see we have two out of two containers running inside this pod. That is because I've opted in to have a sidecar running. So if I if I ever had to update that secret, um, it'll automatically update inside of our application. You can turn this off. You can. There's a couple of modes you can run this. You can run it as a like an initialization only. So it only happens on startup or you can have the sidecar continuously running, monitoring for changes in the secret and keep on updating it. So now we can see our application is running and let's go and see if the, um, if the secret exists. So I'm gonna go and exec into that pod and now I'm in. And we can take a look at, it should be under Vault Secrets, Hello World. And there it is. So it's, it's my pretty dope username and password written as a JSON file. How awesome and simple was that? So that is basic secrets or static secrets, where we basically inject static secrets from Vault into our application. So how do we get rid of the human factor of someone having to put a secret in Vault in the first place? So that is called dynamic secrets. So in dynamic secrets, Vault has the ability and it has a lot of integrations to go off to an external system, provision credentials on the fly and then inject them to our application so we can do various cloud provider integrations so stay tuned guys let me know down in the comments if this was useful like and subscribe and until next time peace <music>